Right now, the next thing that we can apply when we have a right triangle and only when we have a right triangle is going to be applying our trigonometric functions. That's going to be our sine, cosine, and tangent. However, just like the Pythagorean theorem, like it's really important to understand like your parts of your triangle, right? So we kind of need to take this different approach of the legs and the hypotenuse and kind of understand now the sides of a triangle based on a given angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of redraw a triangle there. All right. And now again, just to kind of review what we talked about at the beginning of this video is when we have a right triangle, right? We talked about these as like, here's your legs, A squared, you know, A and B and C. And we have that relationship, right? The Pythagorean theorem. That's A squared plus AB squared equals AC squared. And that relationship is amazing when we have two sides of a triangle. We can easily find the third side. And also, if we recognize those two sides are part of a Pythagorean triple, we can even more easily find another third side, right? And then also, you know, if we recognize this right triangle as a special right triangle, therefore then we can also um, find the missing sides rather quickly. This has no makes no mention. So when we're looking at this relationship, this doesn't make any mention to any angles, right? The special right triangles doesn't make any mention to any of the angles. However, when we're dealing with our trigonometric functions, knowing what the angle is or knowing where the angle is makes all the difference. So it's very, very important to recognize here. We're going to draw the same triangle. Okay. In this one, now I'm also going to draw and let's say we're going to include this angle as theta. Okay. So now what we need to do is kind of understand a different type of relationship. We need to like label our sides, not just in relationship of each other, but with within relationship of this angle. So to keep things simple, let's keep the hypotenuse the exactly the same, right? So we'll call this one the nice hypotenuse, right? That's always directly across from our 90 degree angle. These two sides are going to be your legs, right? Your A and your B, those are your legs. However, what is another way that we can represent them in relationship with that angle, right? So this, this side length you can see is connecting our angle as well as our 90 degree angle. That is what we're going to call our adjacent side. And then this side, which is kind of opposite of the angle, right? It's on the other side of the triangle. That is going to be what we'll call our opposite side. What we can do here is based on this given angle, we can now create our three um, trigonometric functions. There's actually six, but we're just going to focus on our three trigonometric functions here. So the first trigonometric function says sine of our angle theta. So what that kind of like means is like the sine function based on the angle theta, right? So based on this angle theta, where this angle is within this triangle, that is going to be a comparison or what we call a ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay. Now for a cosine, that's going to be the cosine of theta. So cosine based on this angle theta is going to be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent of our angle theta is going to be the relationship or the comparison of our opposite over our adjacent. So that's going to be opposite over adjacent. These relationships or these comparisons or these ratios are always going to be the same, right? Sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is always opposite over adjacent. The only difference or the thing that matters is where what angle we're referring to, right? So you could be referring to cosine of angle theta. You could be referring to the cosine of angle beta, right? And therefore, when we do change the angle, the ratios are going to change. So let's just go and take like a quick little look. And let me just kind of do an example. And then we'll obviously we'll do some problems so you can kind of see how this is going to be beneficial. So let's pretend actually we're not trying to solve a missing side of a triangle. We're just trying to create the relationships, right? So let's do a three, four, five triangle, right? Because we know that's going to be the side lengths of a right triangle. So we're good here. So we have a three, four, five triangle. And then let's put our angle maybe over here and let's call this maybe beta right? The important thing I want you to recognize here is now we need to label our sides of a triangle in relationship to where our angle is, right? That's what I was doing up here that I was trying to make the most amount of sense on. So if here's my angle beta, right? We still have our hypotenuse is five, right? That's, that's always kind of the nice, easy one to find first. However, I want you to recognize that the, the side length that is between my angle and my 90 degree is our adjacent, right? So now four is going to be my adjacent side. And you can see that three is on the opposite side of beta, right? So therefore this is going to be my opposite side. So now we have an adjacent, you know, I'm sorry, we have an adjacent, an opposite and a hypotenuse. Now we can create our trigonometric ratios based on this triangle, right? So if I was actually going to use the side lengths of them, I could say, all right, the sine of beta, right, is opposite over hypotenuse, which is a three fifths. Cosine of beta is going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be four over five. And the tangent of beta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be a three over four. Now, again, my point that I wanted to make here is what if we go back to theta and say, oh, here's theta over here. How does that change the relationships? Well, what that does is that changes everything, right? Because if you now look at this, if you say what is sine of theta, and actually let me just, let me just actually change the color here because let's go and use, let's actually use red as theta. So if here is my theta, well, now this is going to be our opposite side, right? And this is going to be your adjacent side. 
So if I say, what is sine of theta? Let's actually just rewrite that, the whole thing. So if I say, what is now sine of theta? So I say sine of theta. Now that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, right? So that's going to be a four-fifths. Then I say the cosine of theta. That's going to be now adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be a three-fifths. And then the tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is four-thirds. Okay, so the main thing is like based on what angle you're referring to, right? Theta or beta, your ratios are going to be completely different. So how is this always helpful? Because you know how can the, how can we actually use this information to help us go ahead and solve the missing sides of a triangle? So let's look at some actual examples here of how this would be beneficial. Now again, we have to have the right triangle, right? So that is the main thing. That's kind of like the main theme that I wanted to take away from here is you have to have that right triangle. So now we have that we have the right triangle. Now let's pretend here like this is 14 degrees, okay? And let's pretend this is five. Now, if we have an angle and we have a side length and it is a right triangle, guess what? We can now use our trigonometric ratios to be able to solve for X and Y. That's what's so cool about this. So in this example, right, at 14 degrees, M is my angle, that's my angle, and then I have the five. So what we need to just recognize here is what information do we have? So we have an angle, right, it's 14 degrees, and we have five. Well, what side length of my triangle does five represent, right? It represents the opposite side of this angle. So therefore, this is going to be the opposite side of that angle. So now I can say, all right, let's write some ratios here. So which trigonometric ratio deals with the opposite side of a triangle? Well, that is going to be the sine function, right? If I wanted to find the hypotenuse, I need to say, all right, which trigonometric function deals with, let's say we want to solve for the X, which is the hypotenuse, right? So this would be my hypotenuse and this would be my adjacent side. Okay. So if I wanted to find X, which is the hypotenuse side, which trigonometric function deals with the opposite and the hypotenuse? And you could say, well, this one, the sine function, right? So I could say the sine of 14 degrees is equal to a five over an X. Now this one might be a little bit difficult to be able to do. And actually, yeah, either one of these is both gonna be kind of difficult to be able to do. I guess we can go and deal with a five. But anyways, I'll go through these in just a second. And then what about if we wanna find the opposite and the adjacent? Well, that would be, if I was gonna pick the opposite and the adjacent, which one would be opposite and adjacent? That's gonna be tangent, right? So now therefore I can also write a tangent function at, or I can also write an equation of tangent of 14 degrees equals a five over a Y. Now, if you're just starting out with trigonometry, these might kind of be some equations that you're like, mm, I'm not really sure how to go ahead and solve these. So what I want to do is actually, let's actually kind of back up and let's actually do a different problem. And then we'll come back to exactly these, right? Because I think a lot of times students get kind of confused with these based on like how to the process to go and solve them. So let's just do another triangle. And in this case, let's kind of change the triangle to look something like this something weird in that case, right? And let's say, I don't know, this is going to be a 15. All right, and this is a X and a Y. And then I'll put my angle over here, okay? Now again, what we wanna do is like recognize what are our side lengths. So this is going to be the opposite side and this is going to be the adjacent side and this is going to be your hypotenuse. And again, how did I do that so quickly? The side length between the angle and your right angle is your adjacent side. The opposite side of that, obviously of your angle is the opposite and the hypotenuse is always pointing directly across from your 90 degree angle. So if I need to be able to solve for Y, I need to find a trigonometric function that deals with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So again, going back up to my trigonometric functions, adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So now I can write the trigonometric function of the cosine of, oh, I don't want to use theta. Let's use an angle here, actually. Let's use 38 degrees. So I can say the cosine of 38 degrees is going to equal to adjacent over my hypotenuse. And then if I want to find the opposite, that's going to be the X. I'm sorry, that's going to be the opposite side. So I need a trigonometric function that deals with the opposite as well as the hypotenuse. And you can see that opposite and hypotenuse is going to be, where is it? Opposite and hypotenuse. That's going to be your sine function. So in this case, I can say the sine of 38 degrees is going to equal to the opposite, which is X over a 15. So how do we solve one of these problems? Because this is going to be a little bit easier than this right? Or at least most students, I think, would agree with that. Well, the main thing is if you want to solve for like a Y, you got to get rid of Y being divided by 15. So what are you going to do? You're going to divide by 15 on both sides, okay? So therefore, Y equals a 15 times the cosine of 38 degrees. Now, when you type this into your calculator, just make sure that you have that in your, you have your calculator in degree mode. Sometimes your calculator might be in radian mode. So just make sure you have it in your degree mode when you go ahead and calculate that. And then just make sure you round it based on what your teacher is asking for you. Now, so in this case, I'm just going to round it to the nearest hundredth here. So this is going to be 11.82. And then in this case, we're going to do the exact same thing, right? Multiply by a 15 
on both sides. And therefore, x equals a 15 times the sine of 38 degrees. So I'll just do a 15 times the sine of 38 degrees. And in this case, x is going to equal a 9.23. Okay. Hopefully you recognize, like if you follow like that back same relationship, right? In this case, we just wrote the ratio. Now let's go ahead and solve it. And hopefully you recognize like kind of what we did here, we multiplied by the 15 on both sides. Well, in this case, when you want to solve for an X or a Y, you can't solve when you have the variable in the denominator, right? So I have to get rid of this variable in the denominator. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by an X on both sides. Now I have an X times the sine of 14 degrees equals five. And if I want to solve for X, well, then I need to divide by sine of 14 degrees, right? Because what's happening to this X? My X is being multiplied by the sine of 14. So now I can rewrite this as a five divided by a sine of 14 degrees, okay? In this case, now hopefully you recognize like if I multiply by Y on both sides, Oh, let's go ahead and figure out that answer, by the way. So now in this case, I'll do a five divided by a sine of 14 degrees. And in this case, I'm going to get a 20.67 as I'm going to round 20.67. Now over here, hopefully you recognize that like you're basically going to be following the same process. You're going to multiply by Y on both sides, and then you're going to divide by tangent of 14 degrees, right? So Y is going to equal a, let's see, this is going to be a five divided by a tan of 14 degrees. And if you don't like that going quickly, you can definitely just go ahead and work it out step by step. There's not really a problem there um, to doing it that way. Tangent divided by 14. And in this case, you're going to get a 20.05. So this is going to be a 20.05.